everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, here with another crowdfunding preview for you. Today I'm looking at Peacemaker's Horrors of War, which is a follow-up to the Dawn of Peacemaker's system, which I really enjoyed. I'll be doing a solo playthrough of the first scenario in the game, and then I'll have my thoughts on the design so far at the end. You can skip to that with the timestamps. And as always, we receive no compensation for our crowdfunding coverage. We just want to help you make an informed decision, and I'll be sending this uh, prototype on to somebody else when I'm done. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more amazing content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So if you didn't see my coverage of the original Dawn of Peacemakers, the theme is the same here, although a lot of things have been adjusted. You are adventurers. In this case, I'm a, this fun little guy. And we are intervening in a series of military encounters between two sides. This time it is the Ocelots defending from an incursion by the McCall army. And the name of the game is Peacemakers because we win by getting them to stop fighting instead of murdering each other. And that really comes down to these main elements you see here. So you've got the stats for the different units. They're all pretty much the same. They deal three damage to each other, die if they take five or more damage, and have two range. The only uh, outliers are the Ocelot Archers can shoot at three range, and the main commander for the Macaw Army can take eight damage instead of five. But the most important thing is the motivation track here. This is how much they want to continue fighting. And a lot of actions we can take, as well as suffering losses, will cause this to decrease. And we win if at the end of any round they are both in the green. Now you're going to see that's not a long journey to go for the Ocelots. They didn't want to be in this fight in the first place. But the Macaws, they've got blood on their mind. we got to go all the way down here. But we can't go too far because if any of them go into the black, then the motivation decreases so much they surrender completely, which is not the result we want. We want to keep these uh, nations separate and free. The other main element of the game for the armies are these order cards here. Uh, the one on the right is going to be like the main thing they do and who does it, like moving their units, attacking. And that's going to be based on their shape. So uh, like one card might I don't know, activate a circle. Another card might activate a star. Another card might activate a gear. Attacking, moving forward, you get the idea. The ones on the left, though, are going to modify those abilities, uh, change the initiative of whether they do them before the other army or not. And the big thing is it's going to give us ways to uh, influence their motivation down and try to win the game. But how can some random individual adventurers make a difference? Well, it all comes down to the card play, because what you do on your actual turn, the start of each round, is play as many cards as you want. And this is a one to four player game, so the cards are divided up among the players. I'm doing a single player game right now, so I'll have all of them. And you can play cards to perform one of the row actions indicated here. So this is the survey action. If I'm in a space with a unit of an army, I can flip over the top card of either deck for that army and see what they're going to do for this turn. And usually it'll give me ways to like adjust things so that they lose motivation or don't get killed, that kind of stuff. There's also movement. Each boot lets me move one. And sometimes actions will also let you draw a replacement cards. So you basically just get it for free. But yeah, you can just move around the people. Then you can put down fortifications on your current spot, although not if it's water, and those will basically uh, go away to stop damage being dealt, because we don't want the armies to kill each other. It's going to lower motivation, maybe in ways we don't want, and also to cause us to add these horror cards to our deck as we are horrified by the casualties of war around us. And then this last one is, I think, called Delegate, which lets you uh, give cards to other people which is especially useful because you can also use cards for their little schemes down here at the bottom, but they're all going to have a bonus for a specific player. So here, this Lost Missive lets me discard one card from a nearby army's deck, nearby meaning they're in the same space as me. But if I was that character, which I'm not, I could do two cards. But here, this one does match me, Emergency Care. I can move up to two damage from a nearby unit, or if it's me, three damage. So you have uh, reasons to kind of get specific cards of specific people. Now, to actually get into the gameplay, though, the game is going to come with uh, six scenarios, I believe, but they have a lot of challenges you can add on. And I'm doing one of those right now. So I have four horror cards. Let's see where there's one. Oh, there's two of them together. <laughs> I have four horror cards shuffled together into here. This is, again, an optional challenge because I've already beaten this one a couple times and they have several of these for each scenarios i'm going to try to win even with these horror cards waiting kind of mess up my efforts all right so we start with an adventurer phase where i can play as many cards as i want then we'll have an army phase where we flip over the cards for each army and they do what they do and then we'll have a status phase where we see if the game ends so currently the only cards i have are to move and draw Put down some fortifications to protect people. Again, the uh, point is never going to matter in a solo game. And then for food poisoning, I can give up to two damage to a nearby unit, but I can't kill them. 
Or for local contacts, I can flip the topmost card face up from any army's deck, because normally you need to be in the same space as them to find out what they're doing. Now, hopefully they're not going to murder each other too much this first turn, but remember I have played this scenario a few times, and I know that one of the most annoying things is the commander has a card in the deck that is going to boost motivation, raise up his army's morale as long as he is uninjured. And I think it's pretty obvious that I don't want them a cause to gain more motivation. They're already way, way above. <laughs> so um, I want to get that as low as I can, while mostly keeping the ocelots in good spirits because they are in a bad place if they lose too much. So this is actually a great starting hand because I'm going to try to move to be on the commander's space and then poison him because that'll stop him from inspiring his troops while he's otherwise occupied. So that's what we're going to do. So first I'll play local contacts to move a single space and draw a replacement card into the circle macaw a soldier spot here. And yeah, anything would have been fine. Ooh, this one would have let me uh, look at two different things. That's pretty great. And the scheme at the bottom, move a nearby unit one space backwards. Oh, that's such a good card. Oh, wait a second. I have the ocelots on totally the wrong spots. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that's correct. Okay. Yeah, if I move this guy backward, actually, I guess he wouldn't be out of range of this archer, but he would be out of range of this archer. But I'm still going to go ahead with my plan, move uh, up to two more. I'll go into the commander and say, hey, commander, I got something yummy for you to eat. If you use a card for a scheme, you discard it just uh, like if you use it for one of the rows. So he's going to take two damage. I should just use the little tokens here. And we're good to go for the end of the round. Now, technically, I can stop playing cards whenever I want uh, and just keep them all. There's uh, no hand limit, so I could like just build up a ton of cards and do crazy stuff all in one turn. But for now, pretty happy with what I got. So I got four cards for next turn. In a multiplayer game, we would have divided those up among us. In solo, they are all for me. But now we get into the scariest part of the turn, the army phase. And I didn't look at anything, so they could be doing whatever they want. So the McCalls are doing a swift cover action. With initiative 9.6. The point six is only used for tie-breaking. Whereas the Ocelots are doing a surprise advancement. Why are y'all advancing? The surprise says at the start of the army phase, roll the D12 die. And this order's initiative is the rolled value. So they get a 4. So they are slower than the Macaws. Which unfortunately means the Macaw are going to gain one motivation. Uh, the left cards, remember, tend to be what controls their motivation. Says so this is the fastest order this round, which it certainly is. They get plus one. If it had been the slowest, they would have gotten minus one. But what are they doing? Each circle McCall gains plus two defense for this round. Ooh, but this is good. If one or more McCalls receive or have received damage this round, that includes my food poisoning, minus one motivation. So they're going to stay equal, <laughs> plus one and minus one, but that could have gone worse. And they're not attacking. They're just uh, gaining defense in the case somebody else attacks them. Meanwhile, the Ocelot Warrior is going to move forward, not the Archers, just the Warrior. And by the way, the first scenario does have like a lot of things on here that are just like little tutorial things. So they remind you that uh, fortifications don't move with them because you use an all new deck of activation cards for each scenario. So that didn't work out too badly, except this is not great. <laughs> I don't want these people to murder each other. Although it will, he, he is going to stop this uh, Macaw guy from advancing because enemies can't advance into each other. And we end with the status phase. The Ocelots didn't change their motivation. The Macaws went up from their swiftness and down from their uh, damage in cover. So yeah, we haven't made any progress yet. All right, but what can I do this turn? Ton of movement. A lot of options to survey what the enemies are doing. And one really good fortification card. Maybe I can put that on the Ocelot Warrior. Okay, in Safe Haven, let's me put two, or if I was this guy, three fortifications in any space without water, without even moving, so I can definitely protect that Ocelot. Mixed group. Replace the insignia of a nearby army's next order with circle if the army has units in that group. Okay, so I could control who's going to do something. In the local context, flip the topmost card face up from any army's deck. Okay, that's the other one I had before. So first, let's go ahead and use one of the safe havens just for a survey action to see what the Macaw's way of losing stuff is this turn. Oh, perfect. Okay, this is the one I was talking about. Timid. If the commander has full life, they would get plus one motivation. Otherwise, they get minus one. So I don't have to do anything for that. They're going to uh, get messed up either way. All right, now I could survey more stuff, but I don't think knowing what they're going to do is going to help me much if I can't do anything about it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use Safe Haven to put two fortifications on a spot and protect this little uh, overcommitted Ocelot Warrior on the bridge. Now, the fortification tokens stay on the tile. So like if this guy was forced to retreat or if he somehow came forward, they would just be right there. And they will take damage first. So uh, the Macaws each do three damage. He's got five life. Let's say that both these people attacked him, which would be terrible. Then uh, the first three damage, two would be prevented. He would take one. The next one would do three. He'd still be barely alive. All right, and I get four more cards. Another mixed group. Carrier Pigeon has great icons. It's useless in solo, though. 
Oh, too bad that it's better for my specific character. I draw one card from the resource deck, and then I may give one card to another player, and they may give one back to you. I guess I could at least draw a replacement card if I wanted to. Okay, and then I have Consultation. Move any one card from a nearby army's deck to any other position in the deck. That's great, so I can actually like move it where I want it to be. And then Encouraging Words. All units of a nearby army gain plus two defense for this round. That's really solid, too, when I know the other enemies are going to attack. All right, so I have some cool options. I have a lot of cards for next turn. Still haven't drawn any of the horror that the uh, challenge mode I'm operating on put in the decks. All right, but let's go ahead and see what the McCalls are doing. So they are doing a timid advancement. The star McCall... Oh my gosh, this is going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> they will lose one motivation uh, because, again, their commander is hurt. And then the Ocelots are... Uh oh they're attacking. Oh, an unexpected strike. So it says circle here, but I'm going to roll the die, which uh, has shapes on it, and see who actually attacks. And oh my gosh... This is not good for the birds, everybody. <laughs> they are going to get hit a bit. So this is a five speed, four plus one with the point two as a tiebreaker. And this is a 6.9. So they advance first and it's the star unit. So this one, and by the way, they couldn't have been attacked by anybody who wasn't adjacent to them while they were in the woods. So they were nice and stealthy and protected. Now they're not so much. And I'm left all alone. The commander is moving out with his two life. And they all, by the way, the the facing does matter. Like, they have to go forward and backward. There are no cards that, like, turn them, at least in this scenario or anything. But then, oh my gosh, uh, the archers are going to shoot the birds. And targeting is very simple. They can shoot uh, for the archers up to three spaces away. And they can shoot in all directions. Their facing doesn't matter. And they always go for the closest enemy. And when it's equidistant, they go for the one that's directly in front of their facing. And then clockwise from there. So in this case, the archer on the tower over here is shooting that guy. He's only got two life left. And the archer here, even though both these uh, groups are two spaces away, prefers the one directly in front of him right above me. All right, so yikes, the ocelots definitely drew first blood. And when enemy units are defeated, they do lose one motivation. But uh, I also got those horror cards, so it's not really the best way to do things. And also, if the commander is defeated, although he has six more life, his side's motivation drops straight to surrender, which means I lose. Oh, speaking of motivation, though, the first positive development, we're at 10. We need to get down to two. All right, so what do I want to do? I want to get like some fortifications going, maybe some healing. I didn't get any of the healing cards yet. Let's see, I could do the encouraging words that would give plus two defense to all the macaws and stop them from getting killed. But let's first find out. I'm going to use local context. I can do it on any army to flip the topmost card of one of their decks. I'm going to do it to the ocelots. Okay, so they're going to be covering this turn. That's great, because that means if the birds attack them, they won't get hurt much, and they won't be attacking the birds, so I don't have to worry about protecting them yet. So with that in mind, I'm going to move and uh, gain a replacement card. So I'll use this one. That gets me another local contacts. Nice. And yeah, I think I'll move to be back in the thick of it. Well, actually, I'll move to be with this guy, so I can protect him if needed. And then I want to see how I can keep on lowering that macaw uh, motivation. Let's go use Carrier Pigeon to look at one of their cards. And I care more about the left one this time, how their motivation could go down, because even if they attack, the Ocelots won't be in too much trouble. Oh, exhausted. They're just going to lose motivation automatically. I'd love these automatic ones. All right, well, with that in mind, yeah, let's just hang out for this turn. I don't really need to do anything yet, do I? Right, so four more cards. Let's see if a horror comes out yet. No? Wow. All right. Okay, I do have another... I don't want to poison anybody else necessarily because they're already pretty hurt i want my healing one. all right so the macaws are doing an exhausted strike Ooh, they are attacking uh so it goes uh the circle ones are attacking we'll get to that in a second but the ocelots are doing a surprise cover which actually does matter because if they are slower than the macaws the cover bonus for defense won't come into effect so we want them to not roll a one gosh darn it <laughs> So the Circle Macaws strike before the Ocelots have a chance to defend. But uh, this Ocelot unit, you can see a little shield there, is on some rocks that give one defense against every attack. And this archer is on a tower. If they ever move off or lose this, then they lose a motivation. And same thing if the Macaws get on it, they gain a motivation. But additionally, it's stopping one damage each time. So this Circle Macaw prefers the person right in front of him. They have up to two range. So two damage is dealt instead of three. Okay. And then this Circle Macaw hanging out with the commander attacks this guy. No defense here, but fortifications take the damage first. So while everyone is pretty hurt, uh, no one is within range of dying yet. Well, except for the, our friends, the Macaws here. But hey, the exhausted card got him down to nine. Just seven more to go. All right, so what do I want to do? So False Order is a nice one. F uh, flip the bottom most card face up from a nearby army's deck and then put it on top of the deck. 
if I was the Fennec Fox, I could choose not to. And something about face-up cards, there are like cards that let you put face-up cards into the deck. Then they stay where they are, and you like know what's coming in a future turn. Um, so I can like move stuff with consultation. Mixed groups interest me the least right now, so let's try to find out what the macaws are doing this turn. Again, I care a bit more about how they're doing it. Revoked! Oh, they don't even do their right order. They're just going to lose motivation no matter what. I love that. That's excellent. All right, so that removes the need to worry about them. Now let's find out, though, if the ocelots are going to kill them, because I think they have another strike somewhere. So let's flip over the right card for the ocelots again with my card that lets me do any army. Darn it, they are going to strike. And it's the archers, huh? Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm going to do... Oh, no, did I not? That's right. I used that uh, I used that defensive card. Okay. Um, I just got to defend some people. So here, I'm going to uh, discard food poisoning to add two fortifications to my injured buddy right here. And then I'll move twice with mixed groups. It's going to be the archers shooting. Get to this guy, the target of this one. And use another food poisoning to defend him from these apparently very violent ocelot archers. And I think that's probably enough for now. Got another false order. That's great. Carrier pigeon. I don't really care much about that. Uh, another mixed group. Where are my healing cards? And a consultation to move a card within the deck. Okay, I mean, that's those ones are really powerful. I don't mind any of that. And where are my four horrors? I did shuffle them in here, but <laughs> I guess we'll see them later. All right, so the cause, we know that it's getting provoked. They would have attacked with circle, I think. That's both. I'm pretty sure they have two circle attacks. We can check before we reshuffle the deck because that's open information once you've gone through it. But the revoked brings him down to eight. We keep uh, pushing along there. And then the ocelots are doing... Oh, interesting. They're doing an unexpected strike, which means uh, they are going to roll to see which group attacks. The circle one I did not prepare for an attack from. That's a star. Okay, it's still the gear, so it didn't change their strike. Yeah, it's a pretty bad one. So the fortification stopped two of the damage against each of these guys, but they are now within one of death. I need, or got to hope for, <laughs> one of my uh, healing cards to come up soon. And that takes us to another round. Now, I'm pretty sure that's all the uh, archer strike for the ocelots. I don't have to worry about them attacking and finishing these people off. Let's use carrier pigeon, though, to find out what the macaws are going to do. And again, I care more about the left side first. Swift. Uh-oh. is one of those ones where they want to be the fastest. Now, there are cards in my deck that let me change the uh, speed of an army and, like, make them faster. But I haven't drawn any yet. So I'm going to... I'm going to use uh, move any card from a nearby army's deck to another position in that deck to put this swift all the way on the bottom. <laughs> Give myself some time before it comes up. But now I have something entirely new. Um, let's go and use mix group to find out what the next card is. Uh, left again. Impatient. Ooh, if this order's right half is strike, place it face up on top of the deck so they'll use it again the following round. But if unable they lose a motivation. So I think they've got at least one star strike, if not two coming out of uh, four more cards. So yeah, I got to check it. Here, I'll use false order so I get to flip the bottommost card and put it on top. Doesn't really make a difference from just revealing the top card, I guess. But it feels more cool, right? Um, advancement. Okay, I don't love advancement, <laughs> but it does mean that at least they'll lose the motivation. So yeah, I'll let that go along. But I need to get some cards to move them back because this circle guy can't advance. The ocelot is already holding the ground, but this guy's going to leave... You can't even put fortifications on water, so he'll be there with one life left, you idiot. This is not Custer's charge here. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll get a healing card to save him. We'll see. All right, so that's it. Again, another false orders. Uh oh, here, oh, that's right. I'm not supposed to see this yet. I got two horror cards. You reveal them after you finish drawing. So that was one, two, three, four. Still no healing. And now we reveal these. Okay, so... Panic attack. I got to roll a d12 three times. For each roll, move one space in the direction shown below. At least this one doesn't stay around. A lot of them are like ongoing negatives. Okay, so, uh, and it would go to a different adventure based on how things were going, but here, of course, it's going to be me. So four is going to send me to the right, and then seven is going to send me to the bottom left, and then two is going to send me to the top right. So that cancels out, so I think I just end up one space to the right. So I freak out and run into the water. Good job, dude. But again, that could have been a lot worse. That's gone. Now, Spy Suspect. If you have a nearby army, discard one card from each of its order decks. Oh, it's also not too bad. I do not have a nearby army, so I think it just does nothing. That's uh, actually great. All right, so now we have the impatient advancement of the macaws. Uh, so they're not striking, so they are going to lose motivation. But the one circle guy will move forward with nine speed. And then I have no idea what the ocelots are going to do. Oh, no, they have a third? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, that's why. 
That was a circle strike that got changed by one of those uh, things. So it's a ritual strike after the advancement for each of the archers. Oh my gosh, everybody. Yeah, the motivation is going to go down, but I'm going to be dealing with some horror upon horror up in here. All right, so first the advancement takes place. Hi! I didn't leave any fortifications there anyway, but yeah, they wouldn't have helped. Oh my gosh. And since they're so impatient, they go down, but that's not the end of their motivation losses. Because the ocelots are also going to be doing stuff. Oh, now this one's important. Before this order roll, uh, with the ritual, I roll a d12. If an adventurer is nearby, I can reroll it once. On a 1 to 8, they lose motivation. On a 9 to 12, they gain one. I actually like them to lose one, because they need to go down twice as well. Good, they did. But then all of the gear ones are striking. So just so I don't forget, they're at a 5. One away from suing for peace, potentially. But yikes, look at this. Boom. Three, he's defeated. It's going to be one motivation and a horror card. And then boom, he's defeated too. So on the positive side, they're now down to five motivation. On the negative side, from witnessing the people I was just trying to protect get murdered, I get two more horror cards on top of the deck. And also there is a like always ongoing challenge for scenarios to have no casualties. And clearly that didn't happen. But I will say on the positive side, the macaws are severely limited in how much damage they can do now. It's kind of more about protecting them and somehow getting the ocelots to uh, lose motivation too. So I'm in the middle of nowhere. Let's uh, get somewhere useful. I'll go and use false order to move up to two. And I guess like this is the place to be. So yeah, let's uh, see what the ocelots now. Let's go to the macaws. And I know they've got that swift coming up later. Let's discard a card to see what this is, though. Okay, Impatient wants to strike. Repeat again. So let's look at uh, if this is a strike. It shouldn't be, right? Oh, God, it is. Okay, so I got to move that. Although I think, yeah, it's the first Star Strike. There could be another one right underneath. I'm going to go and use Lost Missive so I can discard a card from a nearby army. So that strike will never happen. And it won't even get, like, shuffled back into the deck until we go through the other cards. So I'm going to hope that there's, uh, I think, a one-third. No, there's only two cards left. There's a 50-50 chance that what's on top now is not a strike. Oh, man, but I'm going to be poor card-wise again because I only get two new ones. Oh, there we go. Strategic Retreat and move some people back. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, but let's see what happens hard-wise. First, Anxiety. If you have a nearby unit, I do. You cannot move unless your space has one or more fortifications. But then I discard once there are six fortifications on the map. Yeah, so this one is just, like, hanging out. That's uh, That's great. And Breakdown, discard all your resource cards and draw the same amount. No, I like those. Oh, man. Okay, it's not the worst. Emergency care, yeah, I can heal somebody. And Defense Boost, a nearby army's next order is faster. Ooh, and for me, it's really fast. Perfect. So I uh, needed that for when the, what is it, the speedy, the whatever card is coming up. All right, so those were a little bit nasty. Um, So Impatient, come on, not a strike. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Okay, that's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. So that's five speed. And the strike after it resolves will go back on top. So they're going to try to strike again next turn. As for the ocelots, I have no idea what they're doing. Okay, circle is taking cover. Oh, but it's revoked. And they lose a the motivation. I mean, I wanted them to. That's good. But they are definitely not covering. Now, the star strike is just the leader now. So he's just doing three damage. Okay, and then the ocelots are in happy green territory now. And they've got a little while to go before they would surrender. So I really just got to get the macaws to go down three more times. And I'm good. Now, important note, the second that a deck is exhausted, we reshuffle it. So, yeah, so it's a single strike and a single advancement for the circle guy. Uh, two attacks and a cover. So both guys have a cover, uh, but two attacks for the archers, just for next time, so I can know what's coming. Oh, and it does say you remove any dead cards. So far, no uh, insignia, none of, like, the base shapes have completely died. But if they did, when you reshuffle, you get rid of all of them so that they're not kind of wasting the army's actions up. All right, so I think the worst the Ocelots could do besides losing units is the Ritual taking away one motivation and the Revoke taking away one. So we should be pretty safe for a little while with them. I just don't want more people to die. Okay, so I can't move without that. Uh, the Macaws are doing the Swift thing, not this turn, but next turn. So I just want to hang on to the hurry up. And I would like to go heal the Ocelot Warrior. Um, oh, but I don't think I can do it. I just have to hope. The well, the Macaws don't have any strikes left. So yeah, I should be safe for one turn. So actually, I think I'm going to... I'm going to play nothing <laughs> and see what my options turn out to be. So one, two, uh-oh, four. Um, okay, I got two hurry-ups, but let's see what this is. Mental block. You can take at most two actions during each adventurer phase. Discard if you take no actions at all. Well, I just took no actions at all, but I got to take... Oh, my gosh. This is a bad combo, y'all. I'm definitely going to be at the mercy of the cards a bit here. Okay, what are you doing, Macaws? Timid. Okay, that's good. Cover. Okay, I'm cool with that, although it's pretty slow. So that's four, and if they take any damage, they'll lose a second. They're losing one from the commander being hurt. If they take any damage, so I almost hope the ocelots hit them. Just, like, not too hard. 
Come on, show me a strike. Show me a strike. A cover. A ritual cover. Okay. So that happens first. We'll see if they gain or lose. And I'm not in a space to give a reroll. Okay, they lost one, which is probably still okay, especially if I can save their warrior from dying. Then the McCalls also hunker down. They are going to lose one because their commander's hurt, uh, but they didn't take any other damage to get the second. All right, almost there. Give up. Give up, you dummies. All right, I know that on this next turn, uh, we're going to be swift. So if they're the fastest, they'll gain a motivation. And I don't know if I can prevent it now. Oh, and whoops, I should be shuffling this. So yeah, let's look. It's two strikes for each, um, an advancement for each, and a cover for each. Okay, that's super easy to remember. And yeah, there's one unit from each army left, which is a good way to do it, because that way they never like do a double attack and really screw things up. All right, so I don't think I can get to the Ocelots to speed them up for the uh, the Swift card, because there's no fortification where I am, so I need to put a fortification down first. It'll be one action. Then move to the Ocelots, a second action. And then hurry them up a third action, and I can only take two actions each adventurer phase. Yeah, in which case, I think I'm just going to take no actions at all and get rid of this now. Mm, I hate doing that, and some terrible stuff might happen, but at least it'll be back in the discard pile until I maybe draw it again. I'm going to have a lot of cards. That's cool. Carrier Pigeon. Oh, some more healing here. I'll put duplicates together. Seems like a good way to do this. Exaltation, and oh my gosh, another hurry up. Okay. And no new badness. So except for my anxiety with uh, fortifications, I'm okay right now. But are the armies okay? Probably not. Uh, oh my gosh, that's so fast. There's no way they're not going to get the uh, plus one motivation here. They're going to advance forward at 11 speed. All the ocelots are going to cover. And we don't have to roll for which group covers because it doesn't matter because nobody's attacking them. Oh, and actually nobody can advance either. So it was luckily a pretty uneventful turn. The only bummer is that... Now the uh, macaws are back up to five motivation from being fast. But that's okay because I'm back in it, baby. Uh, let's see. So I want to heal the ocelot. I want to find out. Well, let's figure out what the macaws are doing first. So I'll use carrier pigeon to look at their top card. Is it another swift? Ooh, good, good, good. Okay, so I can uh, boost the ocelot. Perfect. All right, so I want to move to be with the, uh, the ocelot people. But first, I need to get some fortifications. Let's use, um, yeah, let's use one of the emergency carriers for two. Now, it doesn't get me to the six I need to discard the anxiety card, but at least means I can move out of this space, which I'll do with encouraging words and draw a replacement card. Oh, wait, the replacement card is a horror. There's another thing I'll need to uh, check on, so see if there's a subtitle popping up right now. Does the horror card wait to get resolved until the next like horror phase in the draw step? I'm going to guess yes for now, but I might be wrong. All right, so now I'm going to emergency care my buddy here. So with my bonus, I heal three of his four damage. And then can I play multiple hurry ups? And give plus 12 initiative? Well, we're going to say we can. It seems like I probably could. They have the ongoing thing to show that they're a bonus. So the Ocelots are going to have plus 12 initiative this round. And then what the hell? Let's put uh, two fortifications down on the Ocelot spot too. Because at the moment, nobody's really going anywhere. So that should uh, keep them hopefully relatively safe. And if I get two more fortifications, get to six, my anxiety will go away. But uh, for now, I'm drawing four cards. Oh, we got to reshuffle all those uh, horrors back in. I didn't get any of them yet. Another emergency care. Cool. Another discard a card, lost missive. Ooh, I'll retreat somebody back. And food poisoning, I don't think I'll use. Okay, what was the horror card I got earlier? Mistrust. You cannot survey. Discard when you have no one nearby. Well, that's not too bad. I can just move into the middle of nowhere and waste some actions to get rid of it. That's not too uh, difficult. Alrighty, so swift what? Ah, swift strike. Good thing I put the fortifications down. So that's seven speed, and the ocelots are surprise strike. Oh, so we got to roll for their speed, but I'm giving them plus six, so I think they're going to be okay no matter what. Oh, wow, they didn't even need me. <laughs> okay, so they have circle attack first, and when they can hit up people in the same spot, they go for the one with the less health. The commander's got six health left, the macaw soldier's at full health with five, so the one damage is going to go on the macaw soldier, so that was good. That's after my fortification stop, too. And then the circle base macaws strike back and do one damage to this guy after my fortifications. I'm just keeping them barely alive here. But from the swift, because they were not the fastest, we're down to four. Come on, almost there. Okay, I can't survey <laughs> until... Hmm. And I don't want to do a strategic retreat right now because I couldn't actually get people far enough away from each other. So I want to like wait until I have a few of them. So I have to move away and move back. All right, well, let's leave, uh, use food poisoning to move away and draw a card. Oh, but I can't move yet until I put some uh, fortifications down, uh, which we'll do with emergency care again. So we'll protect him, move away. And now that I'm by myself, I can get over my mistrust. Oh, and playing it, let me draw. Ooh, safe haven. Put uh, fortifications on any space. I'll go ahead and play that right now and just make sure that and people aren't going to be killing each other. Okay, and then I want to move and draw here. See what the uh, McCalls are doing. Ooh, you know what? 
Let's use, I love strategic retreat, but two survey? Let's do that. So you resolve them one at a time, and you can actually dig deeper into the same deck, ignoring any already face-up cards. So now they're impatient this turn. Oh, I should check if it's a strike. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and do that. And it is a strike. I need to ditch that or do something. Let's see, I could do Lost Missive to discard one card from the deck, but before I waste that, let's see if the next card is a strike. So yeah, I'm going to use Hurry Up for its survey, and you do the next face-up card. It's also a strike, so not worth uh, discarding it. Oh, I know what I'll do then. <laughs> it's kind of a crapshoot, but I'll discard the Impatient. Um, well, should I see what the next one is? Yeah, sure. We'll just look a lot. Uh, we'll do a safe haven to see what the next card is. Another imp. Oh, my gosh. Huh. So that's an Impatient with a Strike and then another Impatient with a Strike. I wish I had one of the cards that pulled like from the bottom to the top, but I don't. All right, well, I could discard one of them, but there's not really much point yet. So I'll just wait and sit and watch them regain their confidence. All right, so I get four more cards. Mixed group. False order. That's what I needed. <laughs> well, I guess I can uh, do it for the next one. Encouraging words and food poisoning. Okay. And then, yeah, they're going to do an impatient strike. Oh, they don't regain motivation. They uh, just would have lost it. So um, after they strike, this is going to go back on top. They'll be striking for a while. Unexpected. Oh, they're striking too. Oh, my gosh. That's the archers. Although it might not be the archers. I'm hoping it'll be the circle guy, because otherwise they might just kill the birds. Uh, come on. Roll. I'm rolling off the board a lot. Darn it, it is still the archers. Uh, so they're a 5.2. The macaws are a 5.3, so they're first. And it's just one of their units. They do one damage. That guy's got two left. Oh, no. And then, yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three. They both shoot. This guy's got less life, so the first attack uh, does one damage after the two fortifications. The second kills him. Oh, I'm doing terrible this game. <laughs> the entire recall army is dying. And just like in real war, the only guy who uh, actually maybe deserves it, the one who started the battle, is the only one still alive. Now, on the positive side, it gets us to three. They have almost surrendered. I've got another horror card on top. <laughs> I'm still anxious, y'all. I can't deal with more stuff. And what's annoying is I had emergency care. I should have realized that a double attack could kill. Okay, so I need to protect the commander or the macaws uh, surrender immediately. Um, okay, okay. So let's uh, let's do false order. Flip the bottommost card face up from a nearby army's deck and place it on top. So we will cover the impatient with revoked. Yes, they'll go down one. They'll skip their strike. That's beautiful. Now I just got to make sure they don't get killed, which shouldn't be too hard. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, I'll do uh, emergency. Well, I don't want to heal the guy, but I'll put two, four, what the heck, six, and get rid of my anxiety. Six fortifications on this guy's spot. I'm building like an armored tent for him to chill out in <laughs> while I talk some sense into him and tell him to stop this battle. And all right, unless there's something I'm missing that should do it. So the revoked strike has 1.3 initiative. What are you doing, Ocelots? Surprise. Oh my gosh, surprise archer strike. Well, we don't have to roll for it. They're definitely going to be first. Yep. So they're shooting at Ultra Tent, but it is not enough. Ha ha ha. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. I actually didn't draw because bad things could happen since I've got a horror card right here. Don't mess me up. Misinformation. If an army is nearby, shuffle its order decks, leaving any face-up cards face up. Oh, so crud. Wait, they might not have done a revoked strike. Hold on a second. Okay, so I just shuffle it, leaving the face-up things. All right, so great. I did end up with two hidden things on top. You butts. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so they'll still stop, and they're covering, which is faster than the strike. So actually, they would have had plus two defense. I think that's each attack, which means they would have taken two damage instead of six, and four of my shields would still be there. Okay, but then they are still exhausted. Uh, they didn't actually take any new damage, so they don't lose more motivation. But that puts them in two, the Ocelots in three, and that was a perfect game. Nobody died. War is beautiful. No tragedies occurred. Everyone came home safe. Yeah, <laughs> that was not my best showing. But hey, a win is a win, and it was on uh, one of the challenge modes with those four horror cards starting in the game. So uh, yeah. So with the playthrough done, let's talk about my thoughts on the game system so far. So first of all, I love the theme. I loved it in the original Dawn of Peacemakers. I love it here, trying to stop people from fighting. But I really, really like, there's a big change they made, the horror card system, and where when people die, you get horror cards that keep cycling through your deck and making your life more difficult. That was not in the original version. So <laughs> the original version had this kind of backward sensibility, at least in my opinion, 
where the best thing to do is often just like let everyone kill each other and like have basically scorched earth and like both armies down to basically nobody. Whereas now, first of all, they have like the achievement for not having any casualties, but also the horror cards are like a very real threat for you. And thematically makes sense, right? Like if you're trying to stop battling, you're seeing people getting killed left and right, it would leave some traumatic scars on you. So I think that's a nice way to address one of my only like thematic complaints with the previous game. And I think it's great. But other stuff, while not too different from the original, is really cool. Like, I don't remember if you had like the face up thing within the deck stuff. I feel like that wasn't in the original. But either way, <laughs> whether it was or not, I think it works great here. You can kind of like set things up for future turns. You can flip over a bunch of cards and like know what's coming and kind of modify it. And that's where the whole strategy of the game is. So like, know, oh, they're going to do this. Here's what I have to prevent. You know, trying to figure out as much as you can. But the game has that, for me, wonderful element of chaos. Like, some turns, stuff is just going to happen, and you got to deal with it. Is that uh, going to be the favorite for everybody? No. You know, it kind of reminds me of something like Galaxy Trucker, where, like, you prepare the best you can, and then you just see how things work out. I enjoy that sort of chaos and, like, element of randomness, and there's a lot to control here, so it's not too random, but some people might not. I also find the card play pretty freeform and interesting. Now, one potential worry about the game, and I felt the same way about the original, is in really high player count games. In solo, as you saw, you have a whole bunch of cards. You can combo together a lot of cool things. Yes, you have to move around more to get back and forth to the armies, but uh, it's still pretty cool to figure out. In two player, I found it's the exact same thing. You have a good number of cards. like You can kind of pick armies to stick with, but sometimes you have to jump over to each other's spots. But when you get into three or four player, you're getting only one or two cards a turn. So there will be a lot of turns where your best move is to skip because you can't do anything meaningful and then like uh, do something the next turn or the following turn. So I do think this is going to, just like the original Dawn of Peacemakers, remain a one to two player game for me primarily and three to four player will be more rare. I do think the uh, the horror cards make like solo not obviously the best way to go because then you're getting hit by every single one. So I think there are cool things going on in multiplayer. I'm not saying like your group won't enjoy it. But for my taste, one to two player is the ideal way to play this one. Oh, but some other cool things. I love map books. Everyone use map books in every game. <laughs> but yeah, I think they're uh, really great here. Uh, it has like setup for everything. It has rules reminders, but things still like look nice. I like the new design. I think it used to be like miniatures that would have the bases already like built into the miniature. I love these new like really attractive, evocative like wooden meeples with these really easy to slot on in the prototype uh, bases. I think that works great. I think your characters look awesome. So I think the components are excellent. And while my uh, prototype only came with two scenarios out of six, uh, the ones I played are really cool. And even like this one that could be considered the tutorial one can play out in very different ways. Like this game was very different than the last time I played. The challenges add a lot. Now it is still only six scenarios. So if you're not somebody who likes kind of doing challenges and is interested in trying out the same scenario with different like kind of permutations in there, you might feel like the content is a little bit light once you beat it all. I don't know what the price tag is yet, but I think it is going to take like that gamer who likes to dig in and try new things to fully appreciate kind of the value here. But the scenario design looks really cool, by the way. So like the second one, which is, you know, again, the only one I've played, has uh, the macaws on the defense. And they're in like this big castle, which gives them tons of motivation and defense. Uh, and then the bears are invading. Look at these guys. Rawr, bear army. <laughs> but then look, they've got two Atara pirates shooting cannons from the boat up here. And you get like, a, so they have an entirely new deck controlling this. You've got a deck for the pirates, so you now have five decks to go around and look at. You've got three armies to manage, which is going to make the game better for multiplayer, going to make uh, Solo even more interesting, too. You've got these cards to set sail and, like, get to the pirate ship and back, and there's, like, different uh, army units added in. Like, the Macaw get this ranger who can fly over the water and potentially harry the pirates, so, like, in one of my games... Uh, he was just like attacking them a ton and stopping them from firing cannons. But since he's on the water, I couldn't heal him. I couldn't put fortifications down. So it was kind of a limited amount of time that he could give me. So yeah, I think uh, just based on these first two, the scenarios look like they're going to be awesome and varied and really cool. And again, playing uh, just like scenario one with the challenges can really vary things up. So again, I think there's a lot of gameplay here, but it's going to depend on your taste and your preferences, whether you agree. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can go check out the crowdfunding page when you get a chance. And good gaming. I'll see you at the next stop.